Hey guys, it's uh, Adrian, Adrian Jensen from ProductionCreate.com. I'm back with a sweet new tutorial. Uh, recently, we were lucky enough to collaborate with Raka Raka on their newest video, which you can find the link to in the description and at the end of this video. We created many of the visual effects, not all of them, but we'll be making a few tutorials showing you how we built the ones that we did work on. Uh, Raka Raka is known for their practical effects and their stunt work. It's super dope to get to work with them. They have all kinds of like fireworks and wire work and just ridiculous stuff. They they wreck shop. They basically destroy a house every time they make a video. So definitely go check that out. And let's get right into the tutorial. So I've got After Effects open here with my raw footage of this dude, um, you know, shaking his hand around as you do. And I have Footage Crate open as well, and we're gonna go find an energy ball. It just so happens that on the front page right now, there's a lot of energy ball looking stuff, you know, just good to go. But if you're watching this in the future and we've added more things since then, which we do, you know, every week, then that might not be the case. But you can go up here in the search bar and type energy ball and you can, you'll find them that way. And then also you can just go into the magic and powers section and they're all in here because they're they're magical and powerful. And the one I'm going to use is the newest one at the point of this recording, which is really cool looking in my opinion. So I'm just going to go ahead and download it. And we'll just drag our new friend into After Effects. And immediately I want to drag it onto this button here to make it its own composition. And I'll just name it a uh, ball. All right, and we're going to use this composition for every time we use this energy ball. We're not going to use the raw footage. We're going to use the composition and the reason for that is so if we decide to switch this out for something else, we can just do it in this composition and it's not going to cause us any trouble, which is great because I just, I, I hate trouble. I hate confrontation. I just want to, I just want to be a nice guy. And the other thing we're going to do which is going to be kind of our secret weapon is come down to here where it says 8 BPC. That stands for 8 bits per channel. Hold down Alt and click it twice to change it to 32 bits per channel. And without going into a lot of detail right now, I can go into detail later in another video if you want. But basically what this does is it makes it so that any glowy effects you have look way better. So that's going to be our secret weapon. If you're up against like one of your friends and both of you are like, hey, I bet I can make this energy ball better than you and you use 32 bits per channel and they don't, yours is automatically going to look way better. So let's drag that ball composition in and I'm going to scoot it back so we don't have this formation part. I just want, I just want it to be already good to go. And um, we need to track it in. And this is like gonna be really hard to track. So actually I'm just gonna go ahead and do it by hand. And I'm going to elect to do it using a null object. If I can find a way to click it. Steady. Okay, so let's just parent this ball to the null object. And then we're gonna move around the null object frame by frame. This is gonna take a minute. Uh, you can do whatever you want. Okay, so I've got my energy ball tracked in and, um, you know, we're looking pretty good. We're looking like we might be almost done already. And, you know, we could be. You could leave it like this and people would say, hey, that's dope. And you'd be like, yeah, I know it's dope because I, I did it and everything I do is cool. Well, we can pre-compose this and we can just call it ball tracked and that's what i've done is i pre-composed the ball and the null object together so they're still moving probably want to add motion blur to that as well okay so we've got our ball tracked composition in our main comp and we can also go ahead and change the blend mode of it to an add and whoa that's super bright that is way too bright so I'm actually gonna drag an exposure effect onto that and just bring it down a little bit. So why don't we add some distortion around the edges? I'm going to duplicate the ball tracked composition and rename that to something like distortion map. 
And I'm gonna open that up and hit S for scale on the ball and just scale it up a little bit. And actually I'm gonna rotate it just kind of a random amount so that it's not exactly the same as the other ball. And I could even like offset it in time and really there's no reason not to. So let's just do that. And if we bring that distortion map into the composition, we can poke its eye out and we can hide it under everything because we don't need to actually see it. And we can add ourselves a new adjustment layer and we can call that displacement. And I'm gonna put it below the ball and now kind of the official way that most people do this is to use a displacement map effect. And you can use the distortion map we've created as your, your displacement layer and just kind of turn that up. And there you go. Now you, you have displacement and you know, it looks fine. However, I, I don't want to do this because this is kind of what you'd expect, like what everyone else that's doing distortion is doing and I like to set myself apart. So let's just do something else, not necessarily better, but different. So I'm gonna add a vector blur instead, drag that onto our adjustment layer. And you can actually set a layer to use as your vector map. I don't know if you knew that, but we can just set it as our distortion map and then turn up the amount. And yeah, now we have distortion again, but it's not the same as the other distortion. It's a little different. It's also too much. So we can just turn that down and there you go. We have a nice subtle, distortion. And another thing I like to do is add a camera lens blur. We can also select a layer in this effect to use as our blur map and let's just use the same one and then just turn that up a little bit. We can hide the ball to see this a little better. Cool and now it's just kind of blurring out selectively and we can put our vector blur on top of that so that it uh, it doesn't basically cancel out the vector distortion. So now we kind of have both. We can put our ball back on there and yeah we're looking golden. What else can we do? We can add some lightning going from the fingertips to the center of the ball. And a good way to avoid having to do some manual work on that is to go back into our ball tracked composition. Grab that null object, hit control C. We're just gonna steal it, drop it back in here so that we have something we can link to so we don't have to manually track that part. So I'm just gonna turn everything off but the footage and the null so we can see what we're doing. And I'll add a new solid and call it lightning. Make sure it's the comp size. Blue is weird. I'm going to make it black. Even though it doesn't matter, it just, it's going to bug me. So let's add the advanced lightning effect. Now, I don't know if you guys know this about me, but I have kind of a vendetta against the advanced lightning effect. And the reason is exactly what I was saying before. I don't like that it's so commonly used, especially by people that are new at After Effects, that it just, if I catch it, it kind of looks amateurish, you know? Um, but this is going to be kind of a subtle detail and I'm just going to just find a way to deal with it. This is actually one of the main reasons why we offer so many alternatives on the website. If you do a search for lightning, you will find lots of different stuff and even just in the magic and power section, it's just full of lightning stuff. It's because I hate this effect. So um, let's change it to a strike. Definitely don't use a, a two-way strike. That's the one that I see is the most commonly used. And people think like, oh, you know, it's, it's two strikes instead of one. So that makes it better. But you know, I don't, I don't think so. I'm not buying it. Let's go with a one-way strike and let's kill the glow. Just straight up murder it, change it to zero. Uh, we're not using this default glow. And let's change our core radius to something small. And I think we're gonna get away with it. It doesn't really look like the default advanced lightning anymore. So what we wanna do is on the direction thing, we're gonna, <laughs> the thing, we're gonna hit Alt and click on that stopwatch. Let's make some more room so we can see what we're doing. And let's pull up the position property of our null by hitting P. And actually, if you don't like using expressions, which I mean, you should get over that fear in my opinion, but if you don't wanna use expressions, you could copy these keyframes and just paste them into the um, direction instead of using an expression. But actually what I'm gonna do is just grab this pick whip and highlight the position. And now our lightning is gonna to attach to that null object no matter what. And now we just need to set a keyframe for the origin and we're just gonna go through frame by frame and attach it to the thumb. So now we're gonna have lightning in between the thumb and the energy ball. 
And uh, to go through frame by frame quickly, just hit page up and page down on the number pad on your keyboard. And this isn't gonna be too painful, it's not gonna take that long. You can skip some frames if it doesn't move that much, you'll be okay, nobody's gonna know but you and me, and actually not even me because like I don't even know you. But if I did know you, I'm sure we could be friends. So the other thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add myself another expression on the, on the core radius, hit Alt and click the stopwatch, and just type wiggle 20 comma one. So what this means, and I'm sorry I explain this every time, but I'm sure there's somebody that doesn't know. Uh, it means this value, which we have set at one, is gonna wiggle 20 times per second, which is, you know, almost every frame, by a value of one, which I have it set at one. So it's gonna basically alter between two and zero. So it's not gonna be visible on every frame and on some frames it's gonna be a little bit thicker. And that just makes it a little more lightning-ish in my opinion. And the cool thing about wiggle is it's also randomized by the order of the layers. So when we duplicate this and start using it for our next finger, um, the core size is gonna be a little bit different. So right now I can hit U and just delete all these keyframes and just redo them for the next finger. And I'm gonna do this for all the fingers. You can also change the conductivity state to make it different. And um, so this is gonna take a minute. I'm gonna speed it through. It's not gonna be that bad, I promise. Okay, so that's our lightning done. Oh, we need to make it look a little bit better. So what I'm gonna do now is just collapse all these lightning layers and I'm gonna highlight all the lightning layers and the null that they're parented to and pre-compose them. And now let's just see what we can do to make this better. So we can add a vector blur effect to it. I know we already used this. This time we're gonna just allow it to use its own self as the vector map and just turn it up a little bit and that just makes it so that the lightning kind of interacts with itself a little bit different, which is gonna help set it apart. And I apologize if my uh, pet peeve about this lightning effect is annoying you. You're free to use it, but I just recommend trying to differentiate it from all the other videos that are out there. All right, and now we wanna add a glow, but what I recommend is adding more than one glow. That way we can kind of make the light look more realistic how to how light actually behaves so let's add one glow the standard glow effect and that actually looks pretty good so i'm going to allow that to exist as it is but then also add another glow and this one where see that looks bad we're just gonna pump up the radius real real big and you might want to bring up the intensity too so we can still see it to give us like a wide glow i may have made a mistake here because this lightning isn't supposed to be the focus of the piece so i might not want it to be that intense so i might bring the intensity back down to one maybe the original glow bring down the intensity of that as well let's just see how it looks with the energy ball actually you know not not too bad, it's looking pretty good. Okay, so I'll leave it like that. Um, we now have the choice to either put it below our displacement or above it. So I honestly think that both looks are good. So just do whatever it is you want. I think I might put it above in this case. So now we wanna go ahead and colorize this lightning and to make it easier, it's better if it's a black and white image, not a white and transparent image. So I'm gonna add this effect called solid composite bring that on and change the color to black so now this is just on a black background instead of on no background at all and we're going to want to change the mode of it to add we can add ourselves a curves effect and we can bump up the blue and maybe bring out some red Ooh, that's a pretty color we can also do something with the green maybe bring it up in the highlights but down in the shadows by the way i'm going to call my new band down in the shadows Comment below if you think that's gonna be dope. Okay, now it's looking a little bit bright, but we already have this curves effect on here, so let's just use it. We'll use the RGB to just bring it down, the brightness. Cool, and I think I might just add a fast blur to it as well, because it's looking real sharp. So let's just soften it up a little bit. That's too much. Okay, so we have our lightning in there. Finally, I think we should add a new adjustment layer over everything. 
and we'll just call this layer glow and add a glow effect as you probably guessed. And what we want to do is turn up the threshold probably all the way. So just the parts that are white are glowing. So it's not really affecting our footage at all. It's just our new energy effects. And now we can turn up the radius of it. It's really bright. This kind of thing happens when you use the 32-bit mode. Sometimes the light will act differently than you're used to. So you have to kind of, you know, just acclimate yourself to it. But trust me, it's it's good stuff. I'm going to turn down the opacity on this lightning because it's a little bit ridiculous. On this glow, you can leave it as is or you can change the glow colors from using the original to the A and B colors instead. And then you can decide what colors you want to glow. And I'm just going to pick some different versions of blue. Cool. And now we have a just like a nice hot glow. Lastly, the edges are getting a little messed up because of our distortion. So my hacky way of fixing that is just adding a new adjustment layer, adding a transform effect to it. And under the scale, just change it to like 101, maybe 102. Cool. And now the edges are all fixed and that effect is done. Wait, no, I almost forgot. There's lots of other energy balls to choose from on this website. So let's give some of them a look. We've got this one and this one and this one. And it's not really an energy ball, but we could try it out. And you know what? Let's just give this a shot. Okay, so the way we have this set up, we just have the energy ball in this comp by itself, which means switching it off for other stuff is gonna be super easy. Let's start with the particle energy ball. Just drop that right in and just kind of make sure it's a similar size so that it'll comp in the same. Okay, and let's just go back over here and see how that looks. But uh, this energy ball isn't really designed with a add transfer mode in mind. So let's just go ahead and swap that back to normal. We might want to bring the lightning up on top of it. Maybe the glow, we can bring up our threshold a little bit. Okay, um, it could do with some better compositing, but that's understandable because we didn't design it with this energy ball in mind. But uh, that just goes to prove my point about how easy it is to just switch it out. For another energy ball so let's try again go back into the ball composition bring in this blue energy ball and it looks like it should be good to go we're just going to change it back to add let's see what that looks like all right that looks pretty good i mean we're just experimenting at this point i'm not upset about the way this turned out let's move on let's try our magic cluster this isn't necessarily as cool as some of the other effects on the site but I do like it because this is made from actual stock footage so it has a more organic element to it you know I actually like this I think we need to turn down the uh, intensity of it a little bit it's looking a little hot yeah, cool. I take back what I said. I actually think this is really great. I think this one worked out really well. What else do we have? Oh yeah, we have the magic circle. So this is not going to be a Dragon Ball Z look. This is really going to be just completely different. But maybe it's what the video you're making calls for. So let's give it a shot. Okay, not horrible. This really should have been composited in... 3D, which we did not do, um, but you know, overall, not super mad at it. I mean, honestly, I didn't really expect this one to work anyway, so that's cool. Let's move on to the red energy ball, and for this one, we're going to want to turn our lightning red. So here's that layer. I'm just going to hit reset on the curves. And just go to the red channel and pump it up and the blue channel bring it down and the green channel I'm gonna bring it down in the shadows sweet band name and up in the highlights so our highlights are more orange and our shadows are more 
red. Cool, and on the glow, let's go ahead and change that to red also. This white point, I'll make more of an orange. And this dark one, I will make red. And now I'll just hit play and see what happens. Okay, not bad, I'm liking this one. And so I think we're done. Wait, do you guys dare me? Do you dare me? Let's let's try this out. Okay, so it is cool to be fun and creative, but maybe don't do this exact thing. However, do do this. Subscribe to this channel to get all kinds of neat After Effects and Hit Film tutorials and stay up to date on new stock effects as they're published. Also, leave a comment if you want to make a request for any future videos or tutorials and give us a thumbs up if you think we deserve it. And check out Raka Raka to watch the full version of the video this effect is from. The link is on the screen. Stay cool and see you next time. I'm gonna go home and think about what I've done.